Hello and welcome to this week's BizSmart Lunch and Learn webinar. Our weekly webinars are aimed to provide advice and share knowledge amongst business owners. If you would like to keep up to date on our latest webinars, please make sure you follow us on SlideShare or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also access all of our resources for business owners by downloading the BizSmart app. Our host joining me today is BizSmart Select Member and Core Advisor, Steve Parker. But before we start the webinar, can I ask you all to use the question mark function on your screen and post any questions that you may have for Steve and he will answer them all at the end of the session. Thank you, Steve. Over to you. Thanks, Caroline. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Whenever you're listening to this, it's absolutely fine. Uh, as you can see, we're going to talk about strategic business relationships and relationship building. So uh, maybe it's a cross with um, a cross between some strategic business insight and dear deirdre where we you know, we get inside your heads on times that and um, it's an often forgotten about subject except when it comes to realizing how your business needs to grow by by having these things so um my background for a long time before i became a core business advisor and, and <clears throat> still maintain it till today is to export to countries worldwide or to do people's exports to countries worldwide <clears throat> and i used to spend 25 30 weeks a year overseas for 10 or 15 years and for a long time in my early days the the goal was to perfect the perfect sales pitch i'm going to get better i'm going to get slicker i'm going to be that brilliant sales and marketing person and um in those lighter moments where you're uh, sitting in your hotel room and you're not going to get home for tea for a fortnight or you you've only got 15 hours left before you get home on the plane you actually remember that the most important thing about when you see somebody in the first place when you're you're chasing that sale you're trying to do that marketing is the absolutely critical thing isn't how slick you are isn't how smooth you are whether you've got the best powerpoint in the world it's that people remember you after you leave because after you leave loads of other people are going to come in they're going to do their pitch and then if they don't remember you it doesn't matter how well you've done you've kind of lost it and then what if you are away from them you're a long way from them they're a long way from you will they still remember it you know, is it about having the best website facebook page social media of course it isn't you know at the end of the day it's about relationships and it's something that small and medium-sized businesses are particularly good at or they should be so <clears throat> we're going to talk about strategic relationships what they are in the first place how you develop them how you might want to use something called the four t's which we've touched on but it's been maybe 12 or 18 months so we'll refresh our memory on on what the four t's are and how you can measure this relationship purpose if you like uh, whether you're the boss whether you want to measure the effectiveness of your relationship building with the people that you work with uh, who work for you or um, exactly how you're going to do it and also as part of the BizSmart process the strategic planning and testing that we all do we some of the critical ones are the bits that you don't expect they're the core values and the core purposes and we're going to try and talk through how if you use those how they link with the relationship building where it all fits a um, little bit about my background uh, yeah. then um, as you can see 30 ideas successfully exporting i still do every day of the week i still speak to people in the middle east and the far east and uh, and usa most days of the week or most weeks of the year for sure uh, i mostly do work for uk companies but i'm still currently doing work in uh, with someone in singapore a couple of people in the uae uh, occasionally catch up with some guys in namibia and the usa <clears throat> the reason i'm doing this is is that i took the time to develop those relationship with them we've kept in touch not always when there's been any business to actually take place but as a trusted guide uh, advisor someone who knows good people who can introduce them to some people someone who can solve their problems and the other thing you notice on there 
is if you always want to get some more tips on a Friday afternoon between one and four, I do a regular weekly business and conversation show on Black Country Radio. What do we mean by um, strategic business relationships? What do we mean by relationship building? Well, the people side does relate very strongly into business. And I came up with the expression some time ago that a sign of a good relationship is when all parties are comfortable in the silences. Because if you imagine going to an overseas market and you're with a partner in those markets, you can't act for, for three days. You can't act for 24 hours a day. Your sales pitch doesn't last for three days. So there are going to be times when you're driving along, when you're sitting with them, where there isn't a necessity to talk. Just like that bit. And if you're comfortable with the gaps and you're comfortable in the silences, you'll find that's a first measurement where you're not trying to compete with anybody um, and you're comfortable with the silences. You see, it's all got a bit confused as to how we measure relationships. And that's why I put the next phrase on, which is, you know, I really can't understand it. He was lonely and depressed, but he had 500 Facebook friends. It's not about how many likes and how many people you connected with on Facebook. It's how many you can truly be comfortable with when you meet, when you talk to them. And the other measurement I came up with is the third one on there. Strategic relationships survive when neither party has immediate orders to place or businesses to do. It's when you can talk to them. It's when you can be comfortable with them even though there's no prospect of an order. So <clears throat> some sales trainers that we have in our gang and with us might say that you don't have time to, to bother with people who aren't going to place business in the next week, next day, next hour or whatever. And maybe you measure your salespeople by that. Uh, I'm just suggesting that uh, you identify which relationships you want to be strategic if you can't afford to be strategic with all of them. Um, so maybe <clears throat> you're using some of these thoughts to manage to develop stronger links with those 10 or 20 percent of your customers. They're going to that are going to create 80 or 90 percent of your business turnover and profits. Those are the ones that you want to be inside their heads as part of your marketing, as part of your business plan, as part of I want these people because I know they have a large amount of business to give me or a significant amount of business to get me. And I want to be in their heads. I want to be in their minds whenever there's a chance of an opportunity. I'd, you know, it's OK if they send them to five people, but make sure they somehow remember me. Make sure they think, I wonder if this is something you could do, Steve. I wonder if this is something you can help me with. I've got this problem. I'm not sure whether you can. Help. And that's when I want them to call me. You want them to call you when they've got a thought in the mind or if they're going for a tender and they want you to help it, help them to make it more successful to secure it. Or they're trying to get into somebody. Do you know somebody? It's that strategic business relationship, not always measured by bottom line immediately, although on a yearly review, you'll be able to tell from those sales and profit figures whether you're uh, whether you have penetrated it are you getting the fair share of it are you taking the time to get in touch with them and are they occasionally getting in touch with you before you do all of that you need to decide what sort of business relationships you want if you don't want to be friends with everybody if you don't want to be friends at all if you just want to do it um, then it determines how much people effort personal time, how much of your team time you're going to allow to put that in because there is a cost to it all. It is your time. It is your employees time is how you want to do it. Um, you want to decide how close you want to get with the, with your clients. Do, you, do they just want to be an account? Do you just want to be an account to them? All of that is fine. Um, and a number of number of ones you'll just have with that. You, if you've got hundreds of clients, you won't have time to do this for everyone. I'm just, as I say, suggesting that you'd that, um, you know, 
concentrating on the relationships and the solutions you're offering, as it says there, is really a waste of time because sales isn't straightforward these days. Not everybody has a business at that time. If you try to sell to somebody who doesn't have it, doesn't have that business ready, has no need for it, you do your sales pitch before you've done your research on the people, then you'll probably end up like the two dogs on the screen on the bottom asking for dosh because nobody will like you if you put it. So don't just concentrate on sales and marketing pitch. Think about the relationship building is kind of what this is about. Strategic and business relationships is also about concentrating on the positive experiences rather than the marketing pitch. Um, and you develop your own style and you develop your own personality. First of all, by thinking of all the people who try to sell to you, think about all the people who've tried to develop relationships with you, looking at other people's marketing and um, see how they handle it. You can learn an awful lot about that. The other expression we came up with, I think I nicked this from somebody else's, it's not about the words that you say, it's about the experience you create when you say them. And those meetings with people, whether they're on Skype, whether they're face to face, whenever you meet them in your networking, it's about the experience you're leaving them with so they remember you, not the words that you use. They might come up with some of your jokes occasionally, they might remember some of your phrases but it's the experience you leave them with. Did they feel comfortable? Did you put some ideas in their head that were going to help them? Or did you just reel the, the pitch off? I had someone recently who I introduced to somebody in a meeting and before the other person had even, you know, muttered a few words, they got their products out, they got their literature out and they tried to sell it to them. And it was, you know, we spent 10 or 15 minutes with, with the other person's eyes glazing over waiting for the tirade of, smooth salve switch to work and um, smile nicely because we're nice people and they're never likely to get any business from well either the person who I introduce them to or me in the future because that's not the way um, I'm suggesting you should do it. You've got to know yourself first which is why I've put this slide in and um, when we do strategy sessions when we do your first meetings with you with this smart the bit that you don't think is typically going to be tricky is the core values and the core purpose. We put that in deliberately. If you don't know yourself, you're not going to be consistent with your approach. You're not going to know what your sales message is. Maybe your sales messages are, maybe the reason why you're doing what you're doing is different to uh, what it says in your literature. And now people want honesty. People are bombarded with information. They want honesty in the message and they want consistency and they want integrity because all of a sudden everybody can find them. Most people can find them, most people can approach them and we're all bombarded with the latest best offer. And even when people have sold to you, they then still ring you up and want you to upgrade and pretend you haven't got the right version. So you need to know yourself first, particularly if you're developing people relationships. Um, I think I can say it. You know, don't get into bed with people you don't you know, know and trust and who don't have the integrity. So the core values which we do as part of the Bismarck process, as part of your strategy sessions, are meant not just so that you can possibly know yourself, but so that everybody else can be consistent with it. And the core values are the values you believe in, the way you work every day, consciously or subconsciously, and they're part of your personality and they're part of your unique selling points. So if five companies had roughly the same thing, one of the differentiators in it is going to be you and your personality or the personality of your team. They're going to be the fact that you're really strong on those relationships. But hang on a minute, that all sounds a bit wishy-washy and woolly, doesn't it? Probably does. <clears throat> but in the Middle East and some other overseas markets, they don't necessarily, even if they've been educated at Oxford and Harvard and they've got a westernized influence, they know that the success to their businesses before was a sometimes written down, but mostly just the inherited method of 
relationship testing and I've covered this before but it's been a while and it's probably worth reminding again um, it's the four T's it's easy enough to remember they want at some time before you've done business after you've done business they want to touch the person and the products they can see them on the internet if they just want that they can talk to you over the phone if they just want that they can Skype you and all that's entirely valuable but sometimes you need to meet people sometimes you need to look them in the eye use your own measurements you want to touch the people and the products that you're dealing with if you can have a strategic relationship either buying or selling you need to touch each other how embarrassing is that not really we're talking about a business sense the level to which you want to do that is in we've touched on before you work there uh, the testing part comes from you've had the meeting you've got them great you think wow I've solved that problem they're solving my problem and then they don't do what they say they're going to do they, you don't get back to them in the three weeks you told them to um, they send you an inquiry but because you've got busy on something else uh, you don't respond to it in the right way you don't tell your team that you've just gone in and got this new opportunity and you want to develop a relationship um, when they ring up somebody says somebody's abrupt on the end of the phone or the email doesn't make you there to be in the same level of relationship that you thought you were going to do so you test people out with a small inquiry with a small opportunity with something that might happen and people will do that with you it's all to do with the relationship building as much as it is to do with inquiry and if they fail then you just measure it according and uh, the tender is after you've done it on a simple test on a, um, a less obvious test if you like you then give people the chance to tender for some for a large amount of business you're more comfortable together you're more comfortable that they're going to be represent you in the right way they're not going to let you down as a supplier they're going to give you the chance of getting more business it's not just a one-off hit where you're a name on a piece of paper and uh, you're going to disappear after the first part critical in relationships where you're several hours apart but I would argue every bit is critical to support your marketing efforts and if you pass all of those three T tests you get to the fourth one which is trust you start to trust each other if somebody makes a mistake it doesn't matter you know oh sorry yeah I completely I completely agree with you uh, it was all right yeah I'm sorry you know you might say uh, yeah I promised you by late yesterday but something happened in my family I had to go off and look after them hope it was all right that I get back to you this morning that's an acceptable one um, if they find out that you uh, didn't do it because somebody else suddenly became more important then you're going to blow the level of trust if you get the level of trust to a certain point even if you don't contact them as regularly it's still there uh, it'll still happen it doesn't matter whether they're five minutes down the road or a long distance away so it's a process of measuring it and to repeat what I said earlier if you can't do it with everyone just do it with those 10 or 20 percent that are going to make 80 or 90 percent of your business because that way it's almost certainly going to make a profit um, here's some other tests so we came up that you can do it you've reached that level of trust you think you're all working together it's teamwork whether you're buying or selling you know they're going to give you great information it's a mutually beneficial business relationship and for all I know you could even be friends and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as long as you don't use the friends to be the business bit but there's your tests if they embarrass you when you work together they don't do what they say or after you've introduced them they don't respond to somebody they cancel planned appointments without a really sensible legitimate excuse maybe I'm just an old man here taking mobile phones you know you've, you've arranged the meeting you've got the plan um, you've sometimes even done an agenda or sometimes it's to do with a specific one and they keep taking the mobile phone calls uh, Caroline and I are desperately hoping as don't go off while we're doing this for example if you've given them opportunities they fail to take them or they fail to tell you why they've displayed them so develop your own subtle test I put on the bottom decide what an acceptable excuse is um, I had somebody reschedule a meeting about um, two months ago now who said uh, sorry I need to reschedule a meeting 
I need to collect a parcel. So I probed a little bit deeply because I, I didn't want to come second to a, to a parcel. And um, and it, it wasn't one of those family ones. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, the wife's birthday present and, it, and needed it for today. And you just, it just then asks, it's just one of your testing methods of, are these people, am I, is this going to get to the level where I thought it is? All of the time, because you know that when you've got a trusted relationship, more business is going to come your way. So there we are. In summary, it's worth thinking about strategic business relationships. It means that your marketing is going to have more impact. It means people are going to think about you when the right opportunity is going to be there. It means you're going to help them, they're going to help you. Decide on your core values before you start so that your messages can be com consistent, your core purpose for you and your business, so that that can be consistent, so that when somebody tests it out, it doesn't fall down in like a deck of cards. Apply it to your 10 or 20%, if not everybody, and um, develop long-term relationships based on what you'll find. Um, people have the same core values and the same core purposes, the same ambitions, and your internal team will become your external team and vice versa. And consistent business over a number of years should happen. There's my call to action. If you want to have a chat about it, you want some clarity and insight into your business through Bismarck, through me, um, you want to get any more thoughts and ideas on it, there's my contact details. Give me a call. We'll have a cup of tea. And uh, good luck with uh, your future planning on anything to do with this. Hope it's helped. Steve Parker, Steve Parker, ICD and Bismarck. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Steve, for hosting today's webinar. I will be sending out a copy of this presentation and Steve's contact details out to you all very shortly. So please do email him direct if you have any further questions. But before we close, just a quick reminder, if you would like to keep up to date on our latest webinars, please make sure you follow us on SlideShare or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also access all of our resources for business owners by downloading the Bismart app. Thank you again, Steve. That's the end of today's webinar. And we hope you can join us again very soon.